What's up guys, it's James here and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about the two easiest ways that you can make more money from your Airbnb properties. Whether you are buying properties and you're investing in properties, these are properties that you own and you've got on Airbnb or other short term rental platforms or if you are managing other people's properties and you're managing them, earning a full-time income, whatever, building a business, managing other people's properties on Airbnb, I'm gonna teach you two easiest ways that you can improve the performance of those listings and make more money. Now, before I do that, I wanna recommend you check out the links in the description down below. We've got two incredible free trainings that you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out. One of them, if any of you guys are here because you wanna buy properties on Airbnb or you're already investing in properties on Airbnb and you wanna ramp up their performance, you wanna keep investing and get the best ROI you possibly can, check out the link in the description down below for our free training on how to replace your income from buying and investing in properties for short-term rental, buying vacation homes. This is really, really cool training. It's a brand new one that we just put together and I highly recommend you check it out. Now, the other thing that I would recommend is if you are interested in managing other people's properties on Airbnb and you wanna earn a full-time income doing that without having to buy any real estate, no need to buy property, rent property, furnish it, nothing like that, then I highly recommend you check out our other free training that's also linked in the description that's gonna walk you through how you can earn a full-time income managing other people's properties on Airbnb. This video is gonna be very complimentary to both those trainings. I highly recommend that you check them out. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about my two recommendations for the best, easiest two ways that you can improve the performance of your listings, get them to be top 5% performers, maybe even top 1% performers on all Airbnb properties in your area, and ultimately make a way bigger return on your investment, make a way bigger return on your management properties, just overall make way more money on your properties. Now, method number one is so easy that absolutely anyone can do it. It really does not take much and it's interior design and furnishing and specifically adding key amenities. Now, there's something to be said for really improving you know, the, the basics, the photography, just the overall aesthetic of your property. If your property is lagging behind in those areas, that would be where I'd start. Just getting the right interior design done, getting the right amenities added in there and getting the right photos for your listing, getting a professional photographer in. But I'm going to assume for this video that if you're watching it here, you already have those boxes checked. And so we want to go a little bit further and really use a, an advanced tactic to optimize the performance of your property. Now, this first one's not really going to be advanced. It's just honestly super basic, but very few people think about it. I find that most people don't actually take the time to do this. So I'm going to share it. And the second one I'm going to share is a little bit more of an advanced strategy that I highly recommend using. So this first one is really about adding key amenities. So this isn't about furnishing, this isn't about decor, this isn't about photography, this is about asking yourself, what are the things that my guests would absolutely love that would add more value to them, that would cause them to book my place over other people's places, that would cause them to pay more per night for my place, and that would cause them to rave about my place to other potential guests if they were talking about it. And so this can vary depending on the type of property that you have. I'll give you a couple examples of one that I recently implemented on a cottage property that's a really great vacation destination for a lot of people that just want to do a bit of a, a getaway, you know, a weekend getaway. That's kind of the quintessential weekend getaway is what this property is. It's two hours outside of the major city of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Um, it's right beside a lake. It's a really great place to go and relax for a weekend or a week during the summer. And during the winter, it's a great place to go to just escape and get out into nature, out of the big city. Now, what do people want when they're there? Well, that's quite different from what people want if, for example, you have a property that is in the downtown core and it's catering towards business travelers. If you're catering towards business travelers, they're maybe gonna want high-speed internet, maybe a Netflix account, things like that, coffee. Uh, for us, they want entertainment and relaxation. Those are the two big things. They don't wanna be bored while they're there, but they wanna be able to relax really effectively. So some nice Adirondack chairs, like some nice relaxing chairs out back, some really nice nice uh, amenities like, for example, a hot tub and a sauna. Those are things that we added to the property. So whether you own the property and you're going to go and invest in buying those yourselves or whether you manage the property and want to recommend that your owner go and make that investment so that they can get a return on investment and you can make more money managing, either one you're going to want to consider. Now, it doesn't have to be as big ticket as a hot tub or a sauna. You can also get the same sort of effect with just a few hundred dollars by buying things like, for example, for our property, we bought $200 worth of board games 
games. That's really fun for people to use, especially in the winter. We also spent another couple hundred dollars on some kayaks, a bike, uh, a ping pong table. Those are all really great. Uh, also outdoor games. So we've got spike ball, we got cornhole, we got bocce ball, all these really cool games that again, we only had to spend a few hundred dollars on and now it adds a lot of value to prospective guests. Another great example is we bought a little movie theater set. We went out and got a used projector and we got a sound bar. That was about $600 all in. And now we've got this great big huge projection screen that's projecting onto a wall in the basement, a great sound bar. So you've got a little movie theater set up down there. Uh, so these are some amenities that we added because we asked ourselves the question, what would guests want? What would guests be willing to pay more for? Now, the really nice thing about this is that it was pretty easy because I am a Target customer. You know, I live in a big Big city and I want to get away and do kind of a weekend getaway from time to time. And when I do that, I want to relax in a hot tub. I want to hang out in a sauna. You know, I want to be able to play ping pong. I want to be able to go and play board games with my buddies. I want to be able to relax and watch a movie with my girlfriend. I want to be able to do things like that. So I just thought, hey, what would I be looking for? What would make me stumble across a listing and go, dang, that is the spot I want to book. That's going to be an awesome place to stay. And then we just really turned our place into that. Now we went pretty extensive. We went and spent about $15,000 between the hot tub and the sauna. We spent some more money, probably about $3,000 thousand dollars on the other miscellaneous stuff that we added to the property two or three thousand dollars there but I can tell you for sure it drastically increased the performance of our listing when we initially ran the projections our best case scenario was looking like about seventy to eighty thousand dollars for the entire year our worst case was about fifty our best case was eighty and now we just crossed over ninety thousand dollars and the crazy thing is that property's only been live for about three and a half months now on Airbnb so that means that we're projecting, we're going to bring in between $100,000 and $120,000 over the course of the year on Airbnb and short-term rental just because we went and made those incredible add-ons. We're outperforming virtually every other host in the area because we went and made sure that the property is optimized for the type of guests that we're looking for and we're charging really high nightly rates and still getting booked up. So that is tip number one. And tip number two is a little bit more advanced. This is something that everyone can do. Whereas the more advanced strategy, if you want more details on it, you want more of the tools and resources we use because there are some tools that you need to have in order to optimize for this, um, then again, check out the resources in the description down below. Check out the links to those free trainings. We're also actually going to be giving you away some free tools in those trainings. So I highly recommend you check them out, make the most of them there so that you can learn and get all the tools and strategies that you need. But really this second strategy is all about pricing optimization. And what that means is really just dialing in your price so you can maximize the balance between your nightly rate and your occupancy rate to maximize your overall returns and sort of squeeze every single dollar out of your property that you possibly can. Ultimately, what you wanna be doing is not getting your place overbooked because you have too low a nightly rate, but not having your place be underbooked because your nightly rates are too high. You really need to dial things in. And in order to do that, there's certain KPIs that you need to know. So for example, a KPI is just a key performance indicator essentially it's a goal and there's metrics that you're going to measure to see how far you are on track or off track from your goal. So for example, for me personally, I know exactly what occupancy rate my property should be booked at every single month out of the year if it's in the top 5% of all properties on Airbnb. If it's a top performer, I know it's got to be booked at this amount for January, this amount for February, this amount for March, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And then from there, I also know exactly what percentage of my occupancy should be booked and accounted for six months out into the future, you know, five months before, four months before, three months before, two months before, one month before, and 14 days before. Because the reality is, let's say that we're looking at a month like July. This will make it really nice and easy. Because July, it should be 100% booked. It's our busiest season of the entire year. We brought in $28,000 on this property in July alone. Now, in July, it should be booked at 100%, but not all of those bookings should be happening in June right? If I'm going to maximize my rates, I should be getting some of those bookings as early as maybe January, February. Some of them should come in in March and April. A few more should come in in April or May, and then more in June and a few more last minute in July potentially as well. And so knowing that I need to know exactly what percentage of that hundred percent, you know, there's 30 days, how many of those 30 days should be booked in January? How many of them should be booked in February? How many of them should be booked in March? And the reality is most hosts and even most property managers, 
managers don't know the answers to these questions. And the only way to really optimize your rates is to know the answers to these questions. Because if you know, for example, that in January, if you're looking at July and it's in January right now, you look at July, maybe you know, for example, that there should be at least five nights booked. Well, what do you do if you have only three nights booked? Well, that means you need to lower your rates. Whereas if you're supposed to have five nights booked and you already have seven nights booked, you know your rates are actually too low, so you need to increase them. You want to be doing that in January. You want to be doing that in February and in March. You don't want to be doing that last minute. What I see most hosts doing is they make the mistake of waiting until June and then frantically adjusting their rates because they're not booked where they need to be. That means that they're going to underperform. That, you know, in June, you don't have access to all the demand. The reality is there were some people that were booking properties for July back in February, back in March, and they were willing to pay top dollar. And because your property was overpriced, they didn't book it. Or because your property was underpriced, they did, and you left a bunch of money on the table. So having the right system, again, this is something that requires the right tools, the right systems to be able to measure and manage this and know what metrics you're trying to hit. But implementing this is what has allowed us to drastically outperform the market and is literally adding $20,000, $30,000 to our bottom line on one single property over the course of one single year. Now, this is what I call pricing optimization. So again, if you're interested in learning about how to do this, then I highly recommend you check out one of the two links to the trainings down below. If you're interested in doing this for other people's properties, then again, I recommend you check out that link in the description for our free training on how to earn a full-time income managing other people's properties on Airbnb. If you want to do this for your own properties, you want to actually go and invest in properties, then I highly recommend you check out the other one linked in the train down below there in the description down below, I should say. Uh, it's a free training on how to invest in properties for short-term rental. And in that training, we're going to walk you through the three crucial components to being a successful short-term rental or Airbnb investor. So either way, I recommend you check out one of those free trainings because they're jam-packed with all the value we could fit into them. There's only so much I can cover in a YouTube video like this. And in those trainings, we're also, like I said, going to give you some free tools, going to show you through some stuff. So no matter what, these trainings are going to be incredibly valuable to you. So I do highly recommend that you check them out. And with all that being said, after you check out those trainings, make sure as well, before you leave this video, click that like button. Uh, just give it a quick thumbs up. It really helps you out tremendously with the channel. I'm looking to grow this channel and we're already growing very quickly. I want to keep on building on that. So please take a quick second, hit that like button, give the video a like because it helps me reach more people with this video and that makes everything a lot better. So give it a like button. Um, and then the last thing is that if you're watching this video right now and you're not yet subscribed to the channel, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. We post two new videos every single week on this channel and I wanna make sure that you stay up to date because I try to make these videos as valuable as possible. So I wanna make sure that you get to see them. Uh, so make sure that you hit that subscribe button. I know a lot of you are not subscribed to the channel yet. So hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with the two new videos we post every single week on here. And all that being said now, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.